Imagine if you could tap into a source of wisdom that has stood the test of time, providing guidance, comfort and inspiration for millions. Today we delve into such a source. This source is not a secret manuscript or an ancient relic, but something far more accessible, quotes. Quotes are like condensed wisdom, capturing profound insights in a few words. They are like diamonds, small in size but immense in value. They can illuminate the darkest corners of our minds with their radiant truth. Today we're not just exploring any quotes, but those uttered by one of the most influential figures in human history, Jesus Christ. His words have transcended borders and generations, inspiring countless individuals and shaping civilizations. These quotes are not just words, but a guide to a fulfilling life, a beacon of hope in times of despair, and a testament to the power of love and compassion. As we embark on this journey, remember wisdom is the reward for a lifetime of listening. Our first quote hails from the Sermon on the Mount, a phrase that is a guiding principle for many, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This profound statement, often referred to as the Golden Rule, is a simple yet powerful precept that transcends cultures, religions and societies. It is found in some form or another in nearly every ethical tradition around the globe. It's a rule of empathy, a guide to action and a testament to the interconnectedness of all beings. In the biblical context, Jesus presents this rule during his Sermon on the Mount, a sermon filled with teachings and lessons that have shaped the moral compass of humanity for over two millennia. The Golden Rule is not just a behavioral guideline, it's a moral imperative that urges us to treat others with the same kindness, respect and fairness we wish to receive. But what does it truly mean to do unto others? It's more than just a call to be nice. It's a call to understand, to empathize, to put ourselves in another's shoes. It's a call to imagine how our actions might affect others before we act, to consider their perspective, their feelings, their dignity. It's also a call to action. The golden rule isn't a passive principle, it's an active one. It's about taking responsibility for our actions and how they affect the world around us. It's about making the choice to act with kindness, compassion and fairness, even when it's difficult. And finally, the golden rule is a call to unity. It's a reminder that despite our differences, we are all interconnected. Our actions ripple out into the world, affecting others in ways we may never fully understand. But by treating others as we wish to be treated, we contribute to a world that is kinder, fairer and more compassionate. In essence, the Golden Rule is a call to empathy, a plea for understanding that binds us all in the thread of humanity. Now let's turn to another powerful statement, love your enemies. Quite a paradox, isn't it? In the realm of human nature, it's instinctual to harbour resentment towards those who have wronged us. But here, we are encouraged to defy this instinct and embrace love instead. This quote comes from the Sermon on the Mount, a discourse filled with teachings and philosophies that challenge the societal norms of the time. Love your enemies is not a call for us to develop affection towards those who have hurt us, but rather it's a call for us to let go of hatred and revenge. It's about reaching a state of forgiveness and peace, about refusing to be consumed by negativity. This quote is a testament to the power of love and forgiveness. It takes immense strength to choose love over hatred, to offer kindness when faced with hostility, and to extend a hand of friendship to those who might wish us harm. Yet this strength is not about physical might. It's about the strength of the heart, the strength of the spirit. It's about understanding that each of us is a product of our circumstances and experiences. Those who inflict pain and suffering are often victims themselves, trapped in a cycle of hurt and resentment. By choosing to love our enemies, we break this cycle. We create a ripple effect that can transform hostility into understanding, conflict into reconciliation and hatred into love. Thus, this quote is not just about loving our enemies, it's about cultivating compassion, understanding and forgiveness. It's about recognizing the inherent humanity in each of us, regardless of our actions or mistakes. It's a reflection of the boundless love that Christ had for humanity, a love that was unconditional and all-encompassing. 
This love was so profound that it extended even to those who persecuted him, a testament to the transformative power of love and forgiveness. So in the face of adversity, remember love is a force more formidable than any other. It has the power to heal, to transform and to bring about peace. It's a force that can pierce through the darkest clouds and illuminate the path towards reconciliation and understanding. So when faced with your enemies, remember to love. For in love you will find strength, peace and liberation. Our next quote is a beacon for truth seekers. The truth will set you free. This profound statement uttered by Jesus Christ has reverberated through the ages, guiding countless individuals on their spiritual journeys. It's nestled within the eighth chapter of the Gospel of John, where Jesus is conversing with a group of Jews who had just believed in him. But what does it truly mean? For many, this quote is not merely about truth in the literal sense, but about the ultimate truth, the divine truth. It's about acknowledging and accepting this divine truth, the authentic reality of our existence and the cosmos. This truth transcends our limited human understanding and breaks down the walls of ignorance, leading to the ultimate liberation, spiritual freedom. The truth, however, is not always easy to accept. It may disrupt our established beliefs, challenge our perspectives and force us to confront aspects of ourselves and the world that we'd rather avoid. But it's in this discomfort, in this disruption, that growth occurs. It's like a seed breaking open its shell to sprout into a mighty tree. In the context of spiritual growth, the truth can be likened to the light that dispels the darkness of ignorance. It's the compass that guides us on our spiritual journey, steering us away from illusions and towards divine reality. It's the key that unlocks the door to spiritual freedom, allowing us to experience the bliss of divine connection. And so this quote is a call to action. It's an invitation to dive into the depths of our souls, to question, to seek, to explore. It's an encouragement to embrace the truth, no matter how uncomfortable it may be. For it's only through this acceptance that we can achieve true freedom. As seekers on the spiritual path, we must remember that the truth is not something to be feared, but to be embraced. It's a liberator, a guide, a friend. It's the light that illuminates our path, the wind that propels our sails, the key that unlocks our chains. Thus, the pursuit of truth, despite its challenges, is ultimately a pursuit of freedom. Having explored these profound quotes, it's clear that Christ's words hold a timeless wisdom. Just as the gentle murmur of a stream can carve a path through the hardest stone, so too can these words of Christ shape our lives if we let them. They aren't just spiritual guideposts, but practical wisdom for every aspect of our daily existence. From the way we treat others to the way we view ourselves, these quotes can serve as a compass, leading us towards a path of compassion, understanding and truth. Let's take a moment to recap the key points we've discussed. We began with the golden rule, the simple yet profound principle of treating others as we would want to be treated. This isn't just a call to kindness, but a reminder of our shared humanity, a recognition that we are all interconnected in the grand tapestry of life. Next, we dove into the quote, love your enemies. This isn't just a call to pacifism, but a challenge to rise above our primal instincts and embrace a higher level of understanding. It's a call to break free from the shackles of prejudice and hatred, and instead to foster love and forgiveness in our hearts. Lastly, we explored the quote, the truth will set you free. This isn't merely a statement about honesty, but a profound insight into the human condition. It's a call to face our truths, no matter how uncomfortable they may be, for only in acknowledging them can we truly find freedom. So you see, these aren't just words inscribed in an ancient text. They are living, breathing guideposts, as relevant today as they were over 2,000 years ago. They are echoes of wisdom, resonating through the ages, calling us to a higher standard, a higher purpose. Each of these quotes in their own unique way calls us to reflect, to question, to grow. They remind us that we are not just physical beings, but spiritual ones as well, capable of love, understanding and compassion. They remind us that we are not just products of our circumstances, but architects of our destiny. And so, as we navigate through the labyrinth of life, 
Let these words be our guide. Let them remind us to treat others with kindness, to love even those who may seem unlovable, and to face our truths, no matter how daunting they may seem. For in doing so, we not only honor the wisdom of Christ, but also our own potential for growth and transformation. So, as we go about our lives, let's carry these pearls of wisdom with us, for they are lights along the path of life. And remember, wisdom is not a product of schooling, but of the lifelong attempt to acquire it.